Hi guys, it's been a couple of weeks. I'm just going to dub over some footage. This footage is of me leaving Dover. And the first place is right on the outskirts of Dover. It's called Samphire Ho. Anyway, um, first of all, see this is Dover Seafront. I parked up on the seafront last night. No charge for parking overnight, as there shouldn't be. And uh, away before 9am. Um, there's a lot of clinking around in the back of the van as I was driving this. I didn't secure a few things down and put a few things away. So, easier to, to uh, reduce the sound and dub over the top. Yeah, busy couple of weeks. The first thing I did was... I was to get rid of my place, then I was dog sitting for my parents, um, staff dog. Then I had a few people to visit and lots of, of, put a few bits of my stuff into storage and get the van ready for this trip. It's been a busy time, haven't done any vlogs, but um, yeah, it's quite satisfying once you get there in the end. So the trip begins, beginning of March. No idea when I get to upload these. It might be a day or two behind. It could be a, quite a few days behind. It depends on signals and um, anyway. So this is the entrance to Samphire Ho. I've cut ahead here. Uh, blink and you'll miss it. Small sign on the A20 as you come out of Dover. And I actually followed a coach and I wanted to go through the tunnel down into Samphire Ho on my, my own so I've um, I held back here let the coach go through on the first red light not realising there's a change um, the lights are so slow it's a it's a single track tunnel and uh, it was a good three or four minutes before the lights went green again after this after the coach but uh, I've cut all that out it's quite an interesting tunnel this. I, I worked here about 25 years ago, one of my first jobs for a security company was was working and I even controlled, did a variety of jobs, but controlled the traffic lights that would allow vehicles and plant up and down through this tunnel, which went down to the lower site when they built the channel tunnel. A lot of the channel tunnel was built from the bottom here. It's what's called Samphire Ho. Samphire Ho was man-made. First of all, they built a lagoon, uh, built the sea walls. And they filled in the lagoon with the spoils out of the channel tunnel, two main tunnels and the service tunnel. All that spoil came out and slowly but surely filled up the lagoon. And over the 25 years since it was channel tunnel tunnel was built. It's become a nature reserve and thrives with wildlife and um, it's really interesting. There's still a big sea wall which unfortunately was closed today so I didn't spend a lot of time down here but interesting to come down through this tunnel. There's a train line that runs along the foot of the cliffs that's the Dover to Folkestone line and that runs through some really old tunnels as well and it's quite a high maintenance line but there's a desalination plant, or there used to be a desalination plant just to my left there, where um, the channel tunnel produced from seawater all the water it needed to run its operation. I'm sure people know a lot more than I did, but I used to walk around this site when it was a building site for Group 4 security. Um, it was quite an interesting job during the summer of 1990, allowed me to save up enough money to go on a three week holiday to Florida, which was something I'd always wanted to do in the first time I'd ever been. As I say, it's um, the seawall's closed today, probably just timings with it being high tide and uh, quite windy. But there's part of the White Cliffs of Dover, they do stretch better around the other side and are whiter around the other side where they're eroded more. But, um, I parked up for a little while here and actually bumped into someone I knew. They were doing some conservation work 
had a little chat with them. Didn't bother paying to park, so I wasn't going to be there very long. Kept an eye out. And... Yeah, um, resuming now as I'm leaving, go back up through the tunnel. And my next my next place I was going to visit was is the Battle of Britain Memorial, and that'll be far more interesting than this little side trip. But I thought I'd just dub over this just to just to say what I've been up to. Obviously, I've got seven months journey ahead, where I'll be heading along the south coast of England, up the north coast of Cornwall around Wales, up to Scotland, and from Stranra or Ken Ryan I shall travel across to Northern Ireland for a couple of weeks, back to Scotland. Once I get to Scotland my miles per day will double, I'm only planning on doing 20 to 25 miles a day at the moment, up in Scotland it will probably be 50 miles a, um, per day. There's a lot of, a lot, a lot of islands surrounding Scotland and I won't visit many of them, not on this trip anyway, um, in the next few years, who knows. But this will give me a good overview of what the UK is like. So come the summer I'll be in Scotland, coming around down the east coast of Scotland and latter parts of August I'll be coming down the east coast of England again, around Norfolk come September time and down Suffolk, Essex and along the North Kent coast back to where I started. So I, I anticipated taking about seven months. I've got a couple of timeouts booked along the way. I have to attend, well, I don't have to, but I shall be attending my brother's wedding in June. I should be doing the photographs for that. And Right, this is where I'll leave this video, and in the next video, Battle of Britain Memorial, I shall explain more. Cheers guys, thanks for watching.